Glad you're here. I want to do a quick magic trick, and I need your help with it. Please say, out loud, the name of the last anime that you watched. Go on. Thanks, though you didn't actually have to say it. I can read your mind, see? Right now, what you're thinking is, this is a pre-recorded video, Jeff. There are thousands of anime. You can't possibly know what I just said. But that's where you're wrong, because I do know with absolute certainty that the anime you just named is nowhere near as cool as bum, 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 Unless, of course, you just said Bang Brave, Bang Brave Earn, or Tengen Tapa Gurren Lagann, or Cowboy Bebop, or Red Line, or Gridman, or one of the other handful of truly classic anime that f as hard as Bang Brave, Bang Brave Earn. But nothing, I mean nothing, f harder. Tenki, Master Am On. Yokai, Master Am On. And I think you'll understand what a crying shame that is once you hear just a little bit of this anime's English. All true anime connoisseurs know that nothing is better than when a guy in the Japanese dub enthusiastically declares, OH SHIT! Or, OH MY GOD! Except, of course, when they put sound effects in the opening theme song, which is another thing Bang Bravern has in common with JoJo. But I don't want to get distracted from that English thing, because by that metric, few shows in history have ever let us connoisseurs eat this good. Just right! Wake up! Wake up! Jeez. Damn it! Sorry, Woo! Oh, shit! The soldier you just heard swearing like a sailor is Lewis Smith, so named entirely because it's so fun to say in Japanese. Watch! Yes, sir! Yes, sir! Like many young Americans, Ruisu Sumisu grew up dreaming that he would one day be a badass, spandex-clad superhero. Unlike most young Americans, though, Lewis Smith actually had taste, so the specific hero he wanted to be was Kamen Rider. Also, he builds Gunpla, interests that would end up dovetailing when, upon realizing superheroes aren't real at some point in adolescence, my god. Lewis Smith decided to become a giant robot pilot instead. Because those are real in the real robot world of this anime. But instead of traumatizing impressionable teenagers, the militaries of this world do Top Gun stuff with them. Also, presumably they kill a lot of foreigners for oil and junk. The CIA does exist in this universe, after all, and they even waterboard people. But this particular CIA spook, he's all about the waterboarding. Waterboarding is his favorite thing. You get that car battery with the nipple clamps out of here, mister. This is a waterboarding house. But just like with regular Top Gun and the regular kind of war crimes, all thoughts of giant robot war crimes will instantly leave your mind the second you witness the glory and beauty of Lewis Smith's intense rivalry with Japan's ace Titano Strider pilot, Isami Ao. Brought together on the islands of Hawaii, in part by fate and in part by a joint training exercise between allies, the pair find in each other equals in skill, but opposites in temperament. The white-hot optimism of a wannabe hero versus the cold, intense pragmatism of a born soldier. You really couldn't ask for more explosive character chemistry. And of course, like Top Gun, they're extremely heterosexual about it. <laughs> However, before any of that can go anywhere you might expect it to, their flirt fighting is interrupted by the arrival of evil alien robots from outer space. Now, 
From a Western cultural perspective, Top Gun, but then Independence Day happens, is already, like, the best pitch you've heard for a summer blockbuster in decades, even before you add the giant robots to the mix. But to those who know their mecha anime tropes, the arrival of these aliens is the first sign that we're about to witness a massive genre subversion. I think this necessitates a bit of a light anime history lesson, but don't worry, you don't gotta do any homework to appreciate how fun this show is. Just look at these f***ing awesome explosions! Weren't those f***ing awesome? You will have fun with this show no matter what you know about anime, it's just more fun the more you know about the context that surrounds it. See, mecha anime are typically subdivided into two camps. Real robots and super robots. Super robots, like Tetsujin 28, Mazinger, and the Megazord are, you know, super, like superheroes, built with sentience and borderline magical abilities fueled by technology of unknown or hand-waved origin, which are typically used to fend off alien invaders, typically with children in the cockpit, often the children of the guy who invented the big robot. This was the only genre of mecha for the first few decades of anime until 1979, when Yoshiyuki Tomino gave us Mobile Suit Gundam. A story of extraplanetary human empires vying for dominance using mass-produced mobile suits. Mecha reimagined as walking tanks for conventional warfare. These were the first real robots, and they didn't usually have children in the cockpit, but the titular Gundam is a hyper-advanced prototype that can only be effectively operated by the 16-year-old son of the engineer who designed it. A bit of subversive meta-commentary on how the whole super robot premise would probably f*** a real kid up, you know, emotionally and stuff. I haven't slept much since we left home. Even when I have the time, I can't seem to sleep. When I close my eyes, all I can see are the battles I've been fighting. Kids like us have to do our parts. When it comes right down to it, the Federation and the Xeon are all the same. Stop biting your nails. Since that point, Super Robot and Real Robot anime have by and large tried to stay out of each other's lane. But the places where the genres do meet are where we find some of the coolest anime robots and anime of all time. Gunbuster, the Ava units, the Big O, and Titan Shifters. And as of this winter, we've got a new name to add to that list. Like those superheroes Lewis Smith always idolized, Bravern comes soaring in out of the blue to save his unit and the Japanese from certain doom right in the nick of time. But Smith's dreams of becoming a hero are instantly dashed once again when Bravern chooses Isami as the one and only man he wants working his joystick and filling him with hot, burning passion. そんな勇気と so, yeah, that also kind of nips Smith and Isami's delicately blossoming, totally heterosexual rivalry in the bud. Not because the big robot gets jealous or anything, he's more than happy to share his Isami with all of their beloved comrades, but it is a little bit difficult for Smith to keep up the flirting after his Japanese ace flirting partner is reduced to PTSD-induced naked Amuro posing, brought on in part by the waterboarding bit from earlier, 
which happens simultaneously to that scene I just showed you of the big robot telling the assembled military leaders of Earth how good it feels to have a man inside him. Because did I mention that this show is also a comedic masterpiece? You know, on top of having the sickest action scenes of the season and quite possibly year. <laughs> You can thank legendary director Masami Obari for that, as well as the cool nerds at Psy Games who keep using all their Uma Musume money to fund f***ing awesome original anime like this, Akiba Maid War, and Zombieland Saga. Big ups for supporting fine arts with your extremely fun anime slot machines, fellas. There is so much more I want to talk about in this anime. Every episode is uniquely insane and incredible, but that's exactly why I want to leave most of it for you to experience yourselves. Not since Samurai Flamenco has a show caught me this consistently off guard, and not since Gurren Lagann has one made me feel quite this hyped by sheer virtue of its willingness to just f***ing go there often with nary a hint as to where there will even be until we arrive. <laughs> By the way, you might be surprised to learn, if you don't watch enough great anime like Metal Gear Solid, that is, that in addition to all the Russian taunting that's going on in this show, there are actually quite a lot of top-tier waifus to go around. More than there are husbandos, even, at least depending on how you count the giant robots and if you want to f*** them. But even with all that stuff going for it, I do know I probably got to give you more than just great characters, action, and comedy. 10 out of 10 to get you really interested in this show. So, here's the bit where the CIA waterboards a giant robot. You're welcome. Go watch the anime now, please and thank you, and then also uh, remember that it exists when anime awards next year. Though, before you do, please leave a like and consider subscribing if you enjoy me doing these shorter, less structured anime review type things. I want to use Basement Life as an outlet for just, you know, gushing about cool anime I'm watching or whatever and sharing thoughts on more topical topics without having to you know, do a whole video essay about it. But I can only do that if you guys support me doing it. And to sweeten the deal, we're also uh, moving to Japan, like right now. So there's gonna be a lot of content related to that on here too, from me and Yazzie, to make that subscription really worth your time. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta go get the rest of my packing done and we are very down to the wire, so I don't even have time to come up with an outro. Bye.